Welcome to this lesson on factoring using GCF, which is greatest common factor. So factoring is finding factors, which are expressions that multiply together to give the original expression. So for example, 2x and 3x are factors of 6x squared, because if I multiply 2x times 3x, that gives me 6x squared. So this is my product. These are both factors. The greatest common factor is the largest number that divides evenly into the original numbers. So if we want to find the GCF of 12 and 16, we want the largest number that will divide evenly into both of those. So these are both even, so I know it's going to be an even number. I know 2 will divide into both of those, but let's try to get even higher. Let's try 4. Let's see, 4 will go into 12 three times. 4 will go into 16 four times, so that works. And then try even higher, so let's try 6. 6 will go into 12, but 6 is not going to go into 16. Let's see, 8. 8 will go into 16, but not 12. 10 won't go into either, so I think the highest number is going to be 4. So the greatest common factor of 12 and 16 is 4. That's the biggest number that will divide evenly into both of those. And then if you want to find the GCF of two monomials, which are two terms, usually has coefficients, and it could also have variables, then you're going to find the GCF of the coefficients, the numbers that are multiplied by the variables. And then you're going to take any common variables and take the smallest or the smaller of the exponents. So if you just have two, the smaller of the two. So let's find the GCF of 15x cubed and 20x to the fifth. So first of all, let's look at the coefficients 15 and 20. So the largest number that will divide evenly into both of those, well, they're not both even, so it's not going to be 2 or 4. They do end in 5 and 0, so I know 5 is going to go into both of those evenly. 10 is not, because 10 won't go into 15, so I think 5 is going to be it. 5 is the largest number that will divide evenly into both of those. And then for your variables, we have x cubed and x to the fifth. You want to take the smaller of the two. So it's going to be x cubed. So 5x cubed is the GCF of those monomials. Okay, so let's move on to factoring out the GCF. So factoring means you want to take something out of that expression. And it's almost like you're undoing multiplication. So we just learned about multiplying polynomials. So factoring is almost the opposite of that. We are undoing that multiplication. And the reason we do that, it's going to help us work with these expressions. And it's going to help us solve these expressions, which we'll get to more in the next unit. So let's look at this expression, 6x squared plus 18x to the fifth. So I want to factor out the GCF. So the first thing I need to do is find the GCF. So let's look at the coefficients first. So the GCF of 6 and 18, well, they're both even, so I know 2 will go into both of those, but let's see if we can get even higher. All right, 4 won't go into either. 6 will go into 6 one time, and 6 will go into 18 three times, so it looks like 6 is going to be our GCF. And then remember for your variables, you want to take the variable, the common variable, with the smaller of the two exponents, so x uh, squared. So that's my GCF. Second step is we want to divide all the terms by the GCF. So I'm going to rewrite my expression here, and I'm going to divide both by the GCF. Okay, so 6x squared divided by 6x squared, that is 1. 
just like 10 over 10 is 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. All right, the next term, 18 over 6, that's 3. And then x to the fifth over x squared. Remember our exponent rules. When you're dividing the quotient rule, x to the fifth over x squared, you can subtract those exponents. So 3, so that would be x cubed. All right, so we divided. That's step 2. Step 3 is we're going to put the GCF outside parentheses. So our GCF was 6x squared. And our remainder, which was this, inside the parentheses. And that is your answer. So let me erase this box. This is actually our answer here. 6x squared parentheses 1 plus 3x cubed. This expression is equivalent to this expression. We have just taken the GCF out. We have factored it out. Now, if you want to check and make sure you did it right, just go back and distribute that 6x squared and see if you get your original expression. So 6x squared times 1 is 6x squared. 6x squared times 3x cubed. Well, 6 times 3 is 18 x squared times x to the third, that's x to the fifth. So you can always check by distributing back. Okay, so let's try some more examples. So in the first example, I want to find the GCF. So let's look at the coefficients first, 15 and 25. So the biggest number that will go into both of those evenly, the GCF would be, let's see, 5 will go into them, 10 won't, 15 won't go into 25, so it looks like 5 is going to be the greatest. And then for the variables, you take the variable with the larger, sorry, the smaller exponent, 2. Alright, so step 1 done. Now we want to divide both terms by that GCF. So I'm going to rewrite it. Divide by 5y squared, divide by 5y squared. So let's see, 15 divided by 5, that's 3. y cubed divided by y squared. I'm going to subtract those exponents, so that would be y to the first power. 25 divided by 5 is 5. y squared over y squared, that's 1. So I don't need to write 5 times 1, that just gives me 5. So I can just leave it 5. And then our last step is we're going to write the GCF on the outside of the parentheses. And what we got in step two, the remainder from dividing inside parentheses. And that is your answer. And you can always go back and check. So 5y squared times 3y, that's 15y cubed. 5y squared times 5, that's 25y squared. Check. That's what we got right here. All right, number two, 9x cubed minus 3x squared plus 27x. So this one we have three terms. We're going to follow the same steps. So let's look at the coefficients first, 9, 3, and 27. The largest number that will go into all three of those looks like it's going to be 3. Then we have x cubed, x squared, and x. I want to take the smallest, so that would be x to the first power. All right, next I'm going to divide all of my terms by that GCF. So 9x cubed divided by 3x, that's 3x squared. 3 minus 1 is 2. Let's see. 3x squared divided by 3x. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And we got that negative, so it's actually negative 1. x squared divided by x, so we're going to subtract 2 minus 1, that's x to the first power. And then 27x divided by 3x, that would be 9. x divided by x, that's 1, we don't have to write that. So our final step, 
I'm going to come up here because I'm running out of room, is write the GCF on the outside, the remainder on the inside. I'm not going to write that one. I'm just going to write minus X plus 9. That's our answer. And then you can always distribute back. All right, I'm going to do one more with you. Number three. So let's do the coefficients first, 7 and 49. The GCF of that would be, looks like 7. 7 will go into 7 one time. 7 will go into 49 seven times. And then we have x's and y's. So we want to take the smaller of the x variables. So that would be x to the first. And the smaller of the y. So that would be y to the first. Now, let's save a step, and I'm going to write this down here, and I'm just going to use the original problem and divide. That way, if you run out of room, you have it right there. So let's see, 7xy squared divided by 7xy, well, 7 over 7 is 1. x over x is 1. I don't need to write that again. y squared over y to the first. Subtract those exponents, 2 minus 1, that's 1, so y. 49 divided by 7 is 7. x squared over x. I'm going to subtract those exponents, so x. And then y over y is 1. And look, there you have your answer without having to write all the steps and rewrite the problem. And then you can actually simplify this. Let's see, let's just erase that 1 right here. And then you can always go back and distribute to check. All right, number four, I want you to pause the video and try that one by yourself. Okay, let's see how we did. So the GCF of 12, 36, and 18, well, they're all even, so I know two will go into them. But let's see if we can get even higher than that. So let's try four. Four will go into 12, and four will go into 36, but it's not going to go into 18, so four is not going to work. Let's try 6. I'm just going up by even numbers because since all of them are even, they're all going to be divisible by an even number. So let's see, 6 will go into 12. Yep, 6 will go into 36. 6 will go into 18. So 6 will work. Let's try 8. Let's see, 8's not going to go into any of those. So it looks like 6 is going to be it. All right, and then I have X's and Y's. So the smaller X, well, let's see, this term doesn't even have an X. So... They don't all three have it, so it's not common to all. We're trying to find the greatest common factor. So if they don't all three have a variable, it can't be part of your greatest common factor. So X is not going to be part of it. And then Y, let's see, the smallest Y. Well, this one doesn't even have a Y, so Y can't be part of it either. So our GCF is just 6. So let's see, I'm going to divide everything by 6. So 12x to the fifth divided by 6, that would be 2x to the fifth. So really you're just dividing your coefficients and bringing the variables down. 36x squared y divided by 6 is 6x squared y. And then negative 18y cubed divided by 6, that would be negative 3y cubed. And that would be your final answer. All right, you can stop the video now and complete your practice.